Hello, I'm Data, and today I have for you a box display variety showcase. A box display is a simple storage tech device that places a shulker box in the world such that the player can access the items within the shulker box. So in front of me is about as simple as a box display can get. Say I'm trying to get magenta glazed terracotta, I open the shulker box, I realize that it's empty, I can request a new shulker box by pressing the note block, and now I'm able to get my magenta glazed terracotta. And to my right is a wiring of this box display that is also 1.12 compatible. Now, this display works really great for project sites and other temporary box display needs, but this lacks a lot of nice quality of life features. So I'd like to share some box display designs that I've made and used over the last couple of years. This here is one of the first box displays I made for Hammer. It's still relatively simple, as you can see by the number of alternative wiring schemes there are, but it has two particularly nice quality of life features that the manual box display lacks. The first of those features is initial box detection. So when a box enters this dispenser, we're able to re read the dispenser through the comparator, and that triggers the wiring to place the box. So as you can see, the box has now been placed, which means I, as a player, I don't have to press any buttons, I don't have to click any fence gates, don't have to click any note blocks to prime the display and get the display going. And the second quality of life feature is that we have empty box, re empty box replacement. So when this shulker box empties, if there are more shulker boxes in this in this dispenser, like I'm going to add now, we'll replace the this shulker box with a full shulker box. So we're going to empty the shulker box. It's going to break, and now we have a new shulker box to access more items. And just to top it off, we also have empty box collection uh, by pulsing this piston here. Now, uh, because this display is really simple, it's also really easy to modify. So in the case you don't really care about collecting your empty boxes, you can wire it like this, or even wiring it like this. And one thing I have done before is uh, I put soul speed as this block here. So if I'm wearing soul speed boots, I can run along the boxes and get a little speed boost whenever there's an empty box. And because it's still really, really versatile and really easy, easy to modify, uh, this, is a, this is a wiring that I've done before to uh, kind of cover up this comparator and uh, get a little bit nicer of a UI. So here the trapdoor opens and the internal hitboxes of the soul sand keep the box in place so that we still have empty box collection, but we don't have to see the comparator. Oh, sorry about that. Let me do that again. There you go. And the boxes just end up getting collected in, uh, in the empty box hopper line. This here is a more complex box display I designed with Sam for the Melon Tech bulk storage. If you're interested in that particular slice, I'll be linking Sam the showcase video in the in the description below. Now, this box display, the wiring for it is pretty large, but it has a lot of key quality of life features that I personally really like. The first of which is we still have initial box detection. So when a box enters this chest, we read it through the comparator, and then we send a pulse down, which will end up triggering the display wiring and then placing the box. And I can demonstrate that to you now. So if I put a bunch of boxes in this display, we trigger the, trigger the display wiring, and now we have a box uh, placed in the display where we can access uh, our items. Now you'll also notice that none of these boxes that I placed in the chest are actually being trickled down into the hoppers of, or the dispensers, into any of the extra inventories. That's because this display is fully bufferless, meaning that we only ever have to look into the chest for boxes. We don't have to look through other inventories to find the boxes uh, that we don't have access to. We still have empty box replacement, but you'll notice that we don't have a hopper line collecting the, collecting the empty box like we do in the hammer display. Here instead, we have a water stream collection. So it's all open air, so you can add that water stream wherever you want. But the intention with a water stream collection is that we can actually call boxes from this display. So let me first demonstrate to you the empty box replacement. If I empty this shulker box, I break it, and then we place a new shulker box. And then also from an external source, we can call a box in the display that has items in it. There we go. And we end up uh, replacing the box in the display regardless. Now, uh, calling the box from the display, uh, I don't know if there's a particular use case for it, but it was a feature that Sam and I really wanted to include in case uh, we uh, anyone had a use for it. And uh, this box display does have one last uh, one last external device it can interface with, which is a uh, this box display is able to know when it's empty 
So it's able to request more boxes whenever this chest empties by using this falling edge detector here. So if I remove all the boxes in this display, you'll see that this lamp turns on, which means that uh, we can send this pulse out to either a, a silo above this box display or an, a remote bulk away from this box display uh, to call more boxes to the player. The collection of all of these features so that would be a box display that has initial box detection, that's bufferless, has empty box replacement, a water stream collection, uh, able to call the display and is able to request more boxes for itself. This is what I would like to call a hands-free display because the player can fully take their hands off the wheel, so to speak. The player doesn't have to do anything to maintain the box display and the, doc the box display just handles everything. The system handles everything. So the player just has to remember if I want loose items, I check the display. And if I want boxes, I check the chest. And that's all I have to do. The wiring that Sam and I made is still really large. So myself, Command Leo, and Ive uh, ended up compacting the, the hands-free box display. And you can see that version on your left here. Uh, then uh, maybe about a year or a year and a half later, uh, there was a bit of a trend to make a lot of these default extended box displays because people preferred the aesthetics of uh, an empty box display that still had a block where the shulker box would be. So I ended up making a default extended uh, version of this hands-free display as well. Now, uh, from an aesthetic perspective, or uh, from a tileability perspective, it's also important to note that you have to alternate between slime and honey when uh, having these tiles right next to each other. But from an aesthetic perspective, I can show you what this box display looks like. So if I can actually put the box in the chest, do that, we have initial box detection, and now we place the box in the display, and it'll look like that. This is what the default extended display looks like. So as you can see from the center block here, I can't see any slime or honey at all, so it looks really smooth and clean. And uh, the aesthetics in the place position look exactly the same. Uh, some people don't like having the gap there, though. So uh, if you do want to have a block there and have a hopper line collection, this is a way of doing it, and uh, it's also really easy to lock these hoppers just by having a little repeater dust line uh, combo right here. But if you want to keep the keep the notion of the uh, display call and having a water stream collection, uh, this here also works for um, this setup here. Also works for getting the box into a water stream, though you do have to deal with uh, dropper randomness. Uh, and I can just show you what these look like if you have the half slab here. So that's the aesthetics of the default extended uh, hands-free display. Now the last half of these displays, uh, these are displays that I've really just made for fun. Uh, they haven't been designed around making sure we have a lot of really nice quality of life features. These displays I've made under one basic principle, which is that I really like cauldrons. And I don't know why I like cauldrons, but I like the fact that you can zero tick cauldrons to collect boxes. So in front of me is a cauldron ceiling display. Uh, and it stores the cauldron up here. We have empty box collection there. We unfortunately don't have initial box detection. So here I've just uh, put a button here, but we do have, um, uh, when we replace the empty box, we do end up uh, replacing that empty box with any boxes that are in the disp in the dispenser. Uh, so let me put a box in this dispenser here, and the player can just press this button from underneath here on the floor to be able to access this shulker box. And another thing that's actually kind of interesting about this display is that you're actually clicking the underside of the shulker box, which is a texture I personally actually really like. So if I put some boxes in the display, and I break this box, you'll see that the cauldron comes down, picks it up, replaces the box, and I can get you the side profile of that as well. So empty the box, do that, zero tick, pull it up. Now we have boxes uh, collected up here. Behind me, I've uh, wired this display without a tileability issue here. So here I am uh, hard powering uh, this dispenser, which is technically not tileable. So I've made uh, this modification to it, but this wiring is a lot worse and also runs into an issue when you uh, tile these displays together and trigger them within a few game takes apart. So I wouldn't recommend uh, this wiring uh, whatsoever. On to some more box displays I wouldn't necessarily recommend, but do hold a deep place in my heart. 
Uh, I showed you a ceiling cauldron display, so it's only natural that I also show you a floor cauldron display. And it's only natural that that floor cauldron display also be default extended floor cauldron display. And it's only natural for that to be a fully bufferless display as well. <laughs> that also has initial box detection. Now, the difference between the wiring on the left and the wiring on the right is that the wiring on the left is the one that I prefer. But the wiring on the right, it could be argued to be a little bit cheaper, uh, a little bit cheaper to build and has slightly fewer blocks to place and slightly uh, less block variety, if that's a, a, a metric that you care about. Now, let's go into the aesthetics of this display. So the default extended cauldron. Uh, you can also adjust the fill level of this cauldron. So you can either have it to be 3, 2, or 1, depending on what you'd like. I personally like it at 2. I know some people really like it at 3. And this is what it looks like when you do have a box in the display. So I can also show you that it does work. So if you break this, we collect the box, and uh, the box is now replaced. And we collect the empty boxes uh, into this empty box hopper line here. There is one little bug with this display, though, which is that uh, if you have no boxes in the chest, and you're down to your last box here, and you break it, the empty box doesn't actually get collected. And it can either spew out here, it can either end up uh, sitting in the cauldron here, which you can't actually see because water in the cauldron isn't actually transparent. But uh, that is one flaw with the display that I did fix uh, over here by introducing some extra latches to just basically trigger the box display again. Uh, if you're on, if this chest is empty and there is, there's no more boxes to be had. So if I break this boxes here, do that, collect the box. And uh, now the box isn't just sitting in this cauldron or spewing out to the side and the box is collected down here. Now, uh, this box display, it has the potential to also be one block thinner uh, uh, going left to right. Uh, this would be if you use a core wiring like this and you send a three game tick pulse with this redstone block and uh, update the sticky piston uh, to basically zero ticket with this redstone block that also locks the hopper. Uh, both Floppy and I have tried to wire this and uh, we were not very successful, but if you do want a wiring challenge, I uh, I can definitely say it'll probably be good fun or it'll be uh, torture. I suppose the natural evolution of one box display is two box displays in the same slice. So this here is a cauldron based quad bulk uh, or cauldron based quad display hall where I've stacked the floor cauldron, uh, the ceiling cauldron display on top of the floor cauldron display. And uh, all of these chests are individually addressable. So uh, what that means is that if I unlock the hopper uh, above this dropper here, then uh, I can send a, an item through this dropper line and it'll end up falling into this chest here. And the same thing goes for unlocking this hopper up here. Uh, on the note of hopper locking, most of the hoppers in this slice are actually locked. Uh, there's two hoppers that you can't really lock, which would be the empty box collection hopper lines. But uh, the last hopper that's a little bit problematic to lock is this hopper here uh, for this chest. Uh, you can technically lock it with a torch without manipulating the wiring of uh, either display. So uh, you would have the torch right here, but the aesthetics of this are not very nice and it also kind of obstructs the chest a little bit, so I wouldn't particularly recommend uh, uh, locking the hopper this way. Instead, what I would say is that you get rid of the internal wiring to redispense the shulker, the redispense the shulker box in the ceiling display and have just a dust line like this that is by default on uh, to lock these hoppers. And then you can depower this line and repower, you can repower the line uh, to redispense the pox uh, based off of uh, pulling off a signal from any of these components to uh, uh, re redispense the box in the ceiling display. Um, now, the ceiling display also doesn't have initial box detection. And if you have this whole thing in a big long hall, it might be really, really irritating to have to walk through and to have to walk through and like press a button here, press a button there, press a button there, press a button there, etc. Uh, you can avoid that problem in two ways. Uh, you can use the global hopper locking line here, or uh, if you don't really want to do that, 
you can uh, have a global line out here, which basically retracts this block and uh, will only affect uh, displays that don't have a box in them. So if I retract this piston here, you can see this trapdoor uh, stays, uh, stays powered. But you can imagine that if this trapdoor were powered instead by the torch instead of the repeater, uh, and I retract this block and push it back, I'm able to generate a quick um, off pulse for this uh, trapdoor to trigger the display, and then that'll end up powering the, the boxes in this dispenser here. Uh, I will show you one last look of the uh, the UI of this display and also of this hall, and actually show you that you can reach everything in survival. So if I'm standing here on this block, uh, you can reach this, um, this shulker box, you can reach this chest, you can reach this shulker box, and you can also reach this chest. Uh, I know some people aren't able to crane their necks all this way, um, but uh, I believe in you uh, to, to reach this uh, the top chest here. And uh, I suppose I can also just demonstrate that the displays all work. So there's a ceiling display, works like a charm. This is the floor display, and uh, it still works the exact same. Uh, would I recommend anyone to use this as a quad bulk? Uh, no, uh, I probably wouldn't. Uh, I might use it just for just for the fun to to say I have a a a qual a qual bulk. I don't know. I'll probably think of a pun uh, at some point. But uh, <laughs> I thought this might be a, a fun little uh, uh, a fun little device to end off this box display variety showcase. Uh, I really do want to thank you for bearing with me. It has been a long, long time since I've recorded any spoken audio, let alone a video for that matter. So I'm doing my best to refine my footing in that regard. I also never took an opportunity to uh, publicly express gratitude that my channel reached 1,000 subscribers, which is really, really cool. I didn't think it would happen while I was on a somewhat indefinite hiatus, so I apologize for the, the tardiness in my appreciation, but uh, I hope you can hear that it's there and it does uh, mean quite a lot to me. Uh, I do want to thank you for not getting me to 2,000 subscribers, because that probably would have been a little bit more embarrassing for me. <laughs> Uh, as always, thank you again so much for watching. The world download will be available in my Discord server link below, along with any channels or videos I mentioned or forgot to mention. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll be signing off.